want to do God's will. The kind of revolution that the world needs is a Christian revolution. If you want a miracle, you've got to expect it to happen. You're the recipients of God's grace and God's blessings, and you rejoice in that reality. Welcome to Life Today Live. Randy Robinson here. There's a very exciting movie opening soon, and uh, we're going to talk about that. If you don't know, uh, Joel and Luke Smallbone are the gentlemen that are known as For King and Country. Fabulous, fabulous uh, band. Uh, and if you haven't heard of them, goodness, you need to go out and check them out as soon as this is over. Their older sister is Rebecca St. James, uh, who has had a very successful music career well there's a film coming out that tells sort of their origins uh immigrating to the united states coming from poverty banding together it, it's an just an amazing story uh and and i'm excited it's coming to life uh real soon we're going to tell you how you can see it it is called unsung hero and so i want to take a quick look at uh, the trailer for the film so you get an idea and then we'll be back with joel smallbone uh, and you may recognize him in this trailer because he actually, he plays his father in the movie. He's also a producer of the film, worked on the writing. Very cool project. Take a look at this, and then we'll be back with Joel Smallbone. Okay, stay close. Let's go. How y'all doing? Are y'all from England? Uh, Australia. Australia. Wish I had an accent. Dad, I wrote a song. Thought maybe we could ask for an audition. Oh, that's great, honey. Let's take it one step at a time. Okay, he tells me you're a promoter. You know someone looking for one. Well, I may know somebody who should be been given a beautiful voice. It's a miracle. She's a special one, son. Your family, they're not in the way. They are the way. There's no food. And we're almost out of money. We need to make some changes. Kids, we need your help. This is everything we have. And sometimes it's going to grow, and sometimes it will shrink. But it cannot be allowed to disappear. I wonder if he's right. Maybe I'm not meant to sing. Or maybe you're not meant to sing other people's songs. It's going to be dangerous and scary. And giving up, giving in, it's not an option. Whatever your dream is, I know you can achieve it. Please welcome my big sister. My dream is to be like you. It always has been. So do I. Yeah, well, boys, get in line. Friday, April 26th, in theaters, Unsung Hero. You don't want to miss it. You can go to unsunghero.movie. Unsunghero.movie. Uh, see the trailer, find out more information about how you can be there to experience this film live. And now we have Joel Smallbone. Uh, to talk about the movie. Joel, welcome to Life Today Live. A pleasure to be with you this morning, my friend. So this film is obviously very exciting, but it's also a very personal film for you. Oh, yeah. I mean, listen, the definition of a passion project, it is my my mum and my dad's migration story from Australia to the United States. Mum um, was pregnant with our seventh sibling <laughs> and all of the triumphs and tragedies that they faced along the way. Um, and I actually, uh, Randy, I play my dad in the film, yeah. which I've dubbed a very expensive <laughs> therapy session. <laughs> uh, but we're, man, we're really proud of it and just can't wait to get out into the world. Yeah. Looking forward to seeing it. Um, how was that playing your dad? I mean, I mean, have you done much acting anyway? 
Yeah, I, I, here there, uh, here and there. Like I, I was part of a, a, a country film in 2014 where I played opposite Billy Ray Cyrus. He played my, speaking of dads, he played my dad in that film. Um, I was part of a human trafficking relief film called Priceless and then more recently was part of a film called, a Sony film called Journey to Bethlehem where I, I played Antonio Banderas' son. So a lot of father-son dynamics. Um, but this was this was interesting from the vantage point of it's your own story uh, or it's my parents' story. And I, I found by way of confession, Randy, that I, I was pretty lazy with my parents' story in the fact that um, when I, because I, I, I co-wrote the, the film and I co-directed as well. So when you start diving deep into it and you go, okay, yeah, I approach this from a childlike perspective with us moving continents and all the rest of it. But when you really drop in and you look at what he was facing, I'm roughly his age, a little younger than he was when he moved, but mm. what he was facing as a man, um, emotionally, spiritually, physically, what mom was facing as a woman in trying, you know, trying to partner with her husband, it's a, um, it's a lot. Yeah. And, 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 uh, so I'm, I'm hopeful that, and I need to make this state proclamation though, that like, I love the Hallmark channel, um, but they're already doing what they're doing. And so we did not want to make a Hallmark film with this. If we wanted to make a dramatic, you know, adventure film, mm. a family adventure film, and um and i love that it's laced with a bunch of 90s music too i mean it's got like <laughs> it's got lenny kravitz and jesus jones and rod stewart and seal and michael w smith it's all kind of laced through the film so it's a real fun okay okay real i fun have to, part of it yeah. I have to ask you about this because if you go back a little earlier because i'm a bit older than you uh i grew up listening to garmo and key and eddie de garmo's in this film what's what's that about <laughs> yeah so eddie de garmo has we to a short version of it, we, we may not be in the States still if it weren't for Eddie DeGamo. Hmm. Um, Ed, and Eddie does, there's a, there's a, his character is in the film played by Jonathan Jackson from the television show Nashville. And um, he, uh, he was ultimately, he was running a record label at the time called Forefront Records. And he was ultimately the one who gave our sister Rebecca her first record deal. Um, and really gave our, 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 us a way to stay in the States. And um, a little spoiler alert on the film, one of the ways that came about was actually we, when we'd lost everything, dad had been offered a job over here, we moved over, he lost his job. And so we were sleeping on beds made out of clothes, raking leaves, mowing lawns, doing everything as a family mm. to sort of, to, to, to make ends meet. And one of the lawns that we mowed was Eddie's lawn Jeez. and so and then that's depicted in the film so the way that our family's cross-connected is pretty miraculous and we're still we're still good friends to this day ah, that that well, that worked out well for him <laughs> that's that is wild has uh now i know it's early um and so I, i'm not sure you know if everybody's had a chance to see some rough cut or finished version of the film but ha has the family had any glimpse at it yeah yeah. I mean, you can imagine the, the minefield of trying to navigate a family story <laughs> when your parents are both still living. You got six siblings. You're trying to, you know, you, you want to make sure there's it's you got to you, you. We wanted to still have teeth, but we also wanted to give people the opportunity because it, it's their likeness to go, hey, I can't handle that going out into the world. Mm -hmm. And so we had, you know, mom and dad particularly read the script and, and sort of offered notes to the script. And then while we were still in the edit, the film is completely finished now and sort of ready to go. But while we were still in the editing process, we played it for the whole family. Okay. Uh, so that they could have the opportunity to speak into it. And I'm really pleased to say that they... I mean, mum was so emotional. Everyone was very moved, and they did not have a note mm. to change. They they really they really felt like it represented that journey in a very visceral, honest way. Now, I I have to imagine, especially for your parents, that just seeing the you know not just the success you guys have had from a musical career, um, but just the success of the family. I mean, that has to be extremely fulfilling. Mm. Look, I, I, I've got a no take. We're not a perfect family. We never have been. Sure. And 
and the the point of the film was not to portray some sort of superior family who did the right thing like i think when when you have the chance to watch it you'll see that mm. it's the it's actually great failure and it's there's mm. ego and there's pride and there's mm. there's you know there's so many layers that are, are looped into it particularly with dad with the with the character i play um it, so it it was very much a, a an honor project but it was not a glory project and mm. and to this day randy we're still like we're an ever expanding family i got 15 nieces and nephews and four of them are my godchildren and 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 a lot of different perspectives and you got to leave room for each other you know i work a lot with family but you have to leave there are decisions that people make that i don't agree with and that's okay probably decisions i make that they don't agree with but this idea of grace in 2024 this idea of you know loving and meeting each other where we are um, versus demanding that we have to be someone or do something. Mm. I find a lot of beauty and freedom in that. And, um, and so we, we're, I, I think we're all very proud of the journey, um, but we want to also be sober-minded about going, man, we're, we're in the fight, and, <laughs> I, and, and that's okay. I, I, I get that probably more than you, you know uh, with working with family as well and for a long time in oh, the yeah. industry, right? Oh, um, yeah. So, okay, I, I need to ask you about this because about 10 years ago, I met a guy uh, who just directed a movie called The Song. And I thought, I, I studied film in school, so I, I have a little bit of background. I've never actually done it. But um, I recognized that this guy was an incredible talent directing, you know, behind the camera, uh, Richard Ramsey. Hadn't seen much from him. I know he had a, a TV movie a couple years ago. How did you get connected with him? Because I was very excited to see that he was connected with this project. Well, I, I, I'll say this, no Richard Ramsey, no unsung hero. Like he, I actually, um, he and I got put together by a team of producers um, developing another film that's yet to release. And we just hit it off story-wise. Like we just, we have such a good like shorthand and we, we sort of are the, the, you know, if if he's the sen the sentence, I'm the exclamation point, and vice versa. And so, we were working on this other project, and then when we started talking about adapting our family story into a film, he was just he was the first one for me. I, I literally just said, they started talking about screenwriters, and I said it has to be Richard. Like he, there's, you know how it is. You, creatively, you're building so much trust. Yeah. And it's a hard thing to build trust, and we already had this project as a backdrop that we were developing and so we were able to just dive straight in and sort of off to the races we went and not only did he screenwrite it but he also co-directed it with me mm -hmm. and so he got to exercise a lot of that directing prowess that he developed on the song um and man i i'm deeply i'm so glad you brought him up because i'm deeply indebted and grateful for his steady hand and he's a father of five too so that was another layer. He knows the big family dynamics, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 no yeah. doubt. Oh, well, I'm very, again, very excited to see that. Uh, the cast as well. How did you get such a cast? I mean, people will recognize, you know, Lucas Black, uh, Candace Cameron Bure, um, but across the board, you've got a really solid cast. How'd you pull that off? Yeah, man, it was down to the wire. <laughs> Look, this is a story. This is a story of miracles, and you see miracles. There's miracles, obviously, portrayed on in front of the screen, but there were so many miracles behind the screen as well. Mm -hmm. And one of those miracles is the cast. I mean, I thought the kids, the kids were just it's hard to. Let me tell you, it's hard to cast kids in a movie, yeah. let alone six kids yeah. in a movie. Yeah. Um, and I just, I can't speak enough to how great they were on and off the screen. Daisy Betts, who plays my mom, as you imagine casting your own mom in a film, mm. you're very particular. <laughs> I had a very particular mindset of who that person needed to be. And man, it almost sunk the ship because we got down Randy to 10 days before we were going into production and we still didn't have our mom. Oh, wow. And Daisy, who's Australian, who's a mother of four, um, her agent sent her the script. She was on holidays at the time. And about five days later, she was on a plane to America for five weeks Jeez. to film with us. And um, 
it just so happened that she had her visa renewed. A friend of hers, she was in Hawaii earlier that year, and a friend was like, you should just renew your passport just to have it handy. So there were all of these miracles. And uh, the thing that we try to do, Richard and I as directors, we just said, let's create the shortest bridge from reality to screen for all the actors. And so Rebecca's actor, uh, the, the, the girl that played Rebecca, Kiralee, um, she's an aspiring artist. And so it just... It was very short. You know, Daisy is a mum and she's Australian. And so it was a very short bridge to cross, you know. So, but I'm very proud. I'm very proud of the, the, the ensemble. They did such a lovely job. Yeah. Way to, way to make everybody sweat. So, <laughs> you pulled it off. Yeah, you're uh, not wrong. Is there anything else about the film? I've got one other question, but is there anything else about the film that you want to add before I let you go? Well, I'll, I'll just, I'll offer this. You know, a lot of, a lot of folks, you know, are curious as to what the why was, you know, and uh, what we want people to take away from it. I mean, the why was like, I think um, family is profoundly important um, today and always has been, it always will be. And there's a great quote by Mother Teresa that says, if you want to change the world, go home and love your family. Mm. And that actually is what closes the film, that quote. And so it was really to highlight the beauty of family. It was really to celebrate mums and, and women, you know, and, and the unsung hero of this film is really our mum. Um, and then, you know, the question of what, what, what do we want people to take away from this? Um, the 90s was like this last little golden era before like the internet and smartphones and like AI and everything just started popping. It was the last era of sort of sitting around the dinner table and it was the last era of actually being bored, you know, and not having <laughs> multimedia hit you all the time. Right. And, and so I, I hope that there's a I hope people are entertained. I hope people like there's nostalgia. I hope people laugh. I hope people cry. But I hope people are left going, hey, you know, you've got this digital world and you've got the physical world, mm -hmm. you know. This one seems to, as powerful it is and as beautiful it is, if you if you lean on it too much, it seems to um, result in comparisons, isolation, mm -hmm. and loneliness. Mm -hmm. And so it's really, and the physical world can be very hard. You know, family can be very hard. But I I think the the film's encouragement is lean in on community, lean in on family, and not necessarily even biological family, but just lean in to the people around you. Cause that's where the sweetness of life is, you know? Love it. Love it. All right. All right. That's the film unsung hero. Last question for you. Completely unrelated. Did you enjoy you two at the sphere last October? No, oh, you know, they just wrapped up. Yeah. It's over. They just did their last show. I was two rows behind you at that show. No. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm there with some other guys in ministry and you, ne you never, you never, you never say hi, Randy. You never, <laughs> I, did, you know. I, did, I didn't know you. I didn't know. I actually talked to some of the guys that were with you because one of them had done a project for us many years ago after, you know, the bottleneck when you try to come out of there, I ran into a couple of guys that were with you, but no, we're sitting there. Uh, and I'm with some other guys that are in ministry and media and, um, a guy next to me bumps me. He goes, that guy looks familiar. Who is that? And I'm like, that's ah, the guys from, from, for King and country. So like there you are. He's like, go talk to what him. I'm a like, small world. I'm like, I'm not gonna man. do that, man. They're having a good time. I'm gonna leave him alone. So, but yeah. What a what a what a great what a great show. Right. Okay. Best. Like, I, I mean, I just cried. Yeah. Be, best venue ever. Uh, and I'm not a big Vegas guy, but you okay. guys play there. I'm coming out. Oh. You've heard it here, everyone. You've heard it here. <laughs> right. Maybe one day, one day before the end, we'll make it out there. You, I, I hope. You, I mean, yeah. a lot of Christian bands could not pull. A lot of bands could not pull it off. You guys legit could. You got such great visuals and stuff. So anyway, that's, no, that's my kind. Man. All right, all right. Joel Smallbone, thank you so much. Great talking to you. Appreciate all you guys. Be out. blessed, man. Yeah, you yeah. too. Listen, we'll see you down the road. Say say hi next time. <laughs> I would I would because I've we've we've met, but I I you know I'm not the guy to go bug people when they're out, uh, you know, enjoying themselves because I grew up with that. I got tired yeah, of growing. I get up, it. So you get you, it. You know the drill. You I know the drill. So all right, uh, April 26, people go see. Uh, you got two weeks. Go see Unsung Hero. Unsung Hero Movie dot. I'm so I'm sorry. Unsung Hero dot Movie. Get the URL right. Go check it out. You see the trailer, get showtimes. 
go see it in theaters. Appreciate you guys being here. Hit the share button if you haven't liked, followed, subscribed. Do that, and I'll see you again next time here on Life Today Live. But we're never gonna survive.